So for the most part, the ceiling's been cleared out as well have my little bay areas or sorry slide out areas that are getting a dividing wall so I can weld in dividers. So the first thing I'm working on is up here in the ceiling rafters I guess is basically I've got a 20 foot of U-channel going this way from end to end and I've got four of them across the the rig, so there'll be one here, one here, one centered in there, and then one on the end, obviously. And the way that's gonna work is the mounting holes in the solar panel, I'll be able to mount the U-channel with a bolt to some stout 3 16th angle, and that's gonna go up in here and sit up against the ceiling. So there'll be one here, I'll drill up with a bolt. I'm gonna epoxy the bolt and washer to this. So I'll have a stud sticking through the roof. Um, and that is what I'll bolt the U-channel to. And then the U-channel will take the uh, solar panel. And then about 40 inches over, there's another one. So with this one, I can weld straight down, straight over, and straight down the edge. On the corners though, I left my weld to kind of keep things strong. I didn't want to grind them down uh, when I put this together. So you can see, I've got a gap up here. So what I've been doing is slicing out a little bit of the edge and the corner and grinding off a little bit of an angle so that when this guy goes up in here and slides over, I have no edge there and I can fill that gap pretty stinking well. And these corner braces here will be just wicked stout. So I'll fill in here, here, down the edge, and down over here, staying away from my uh, composite panel to some degree. And these will support the uh, U-channels that hold my solar panels in. So, shipment arrived yesterday of my rails. So what this is, is aluminum U-channel, and it's uh, primarily used for electrical conduit and things of that nature. What we're gonna be doing is taking one of these guys, lock it into place, wherever it goes on the rail, and then the solar panel is gonna mount on this, and I'm gonna lock the solar panels onto this rail, and the rail is gonna get bolted to the roof. So, that means I have to drill a hole in the roof to mount the solar panel in my nicely weatherproofed, no leak roof. And the only thing worse than punching a hole in the roof is punching 24 holes in the roof. So if you remember, I welded up these support brackets to mount the U-rails to, U-channel, U-rails, I don't know what they are. And on the edges now, you can see I've drilled my hole from our rail on this side all the way down this side and all the way down the other edge so here's the hard part is the mounting holes on the solar panels are exactly 38 and a half inches wide and I guess I could just go up top and measure with a tape measure and get it 38 and a half wide and bolt my rail to the roof but my fear is if I'm an eighth of an inch off it's not gonna line up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my rail on this side. <laughs> so working by yourself sometimes can be a pain in the butt. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, setting the rails up top. I've got, I have one hole drilled and I'm basically pinning the rail down and then I'm going back to the other holes that I've got, that I have drilled on the inside and drilling back up through the rail. Problem is, it is a bugger to get the gun on this nut without pushing the bolt, because I don't have a second person to hold it up top. So I've had sockets on it, I've had wrenches on it, and everything seems to move. So now what I've done <laughs> is I've taken my little mounting bracket bolts. These are for the solar panels. Those are what the solar panels are gonna mount around. And I've actually locked in the wrench 
so the bolt basically can't push up and push off the head of the wrench. So yeah, there you go. So this is what I'm doing. Start with one bolt in the center and get this thing where I've positioned where I want it. I think I have to push that that way here. Get this positioned where I want it and then go underneath and drill the other ones through and you can see those guys are in. I have that those two rails in and now what I'm gonna do is mount the solar panel to this rail and that rail and get it set since this rail is tight or will be tight that rail will have a finite spot and then I'm gonna drill down at my little this is where my brackets are I just line it up with the channel and just drill down from the top and they'll be perfect so the first ones are the hardest after that I think it gets easier although I say that but we'll see so anyway next yep worked like a charm so the next step in the process now that I have the holes drilled on all well, let's see it's eight rails four lengths eight pieces I'm gonna pull these out I have my little cleaning kit I'm gonna scuff clean and seal the rails and then bolt them down and then <laughs> put those babies on solar panels arrived uh, that's five of them and god they're big they are 40 inches in diameter and nearly 70 inches long they're practically half the length of my slide out uh, that's the one I was using to kind of lay into place to figure out where to drill the holes and it worked out great. So yeah, next step. Scuff, clean, caulk, and drive some bolts in. So a quick shot before the panels go in. All four rails or eight rails are totally mounted and actually adhered down I have a uh, layer of Cicaflex under each one of these and then I've taken some self-leveling sealant for the bolts and the washers on the top side bolt heads and the washers on the top side and now I'm just about ready to start throwing panels down and see how they fit so yeah next <laughs> okay solar install on normal roof probably not a big deal solar install on an RV it's kind of a pain. So what I have are these engine five eighths U channels, and they actually make one I think that's two and five eighths, which hindsight being 2020, I probably should have gotten, but what I'm trying to do is keep my profile as low as possible. Nonetheless, to minimize vibration, I've actually added these little guys, which are Teflon guides. Um, for a large piece of equipment and they're the right thickness to kind of and the right width to take some of the shock out of these panels and they also give me a gap had I mounted these straight to the rails I would have no air gap between the rail and the solar panel and these things become less efficient the warmer they are so the more airflow I can get underneath them, the better I'll do as far as efficiency. So the problem is, the mounting holes are right there, eight inches in, all the way around, eight and 12 basically. So here's the problem. With the mounting holes so far under the panel, you have to actually get one of each of these up inside so up inside there yeah so you're reaching under and in the panel and they don't give you enough room to get a wrench or a socket on it so you have to use a box wrench and let me show you how tight it is so basically you have to use a box wrench and you have to hunt get your skinny little hand in there 
and hunt that thing down and try to get it on and then turn it. And as you can see, my arm is just pinned in there. So getting these snug and aligned is a god awful task. Uh, a little more difficult on the ends where I can't lay flat, where I'm kind of crouched over. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> a lot of work for some solar. And when it's said and done, it'll be just over, I think, 2,100 watts. So two, just over two kilowatts of solar that'll be up here because each one of these panels are 360 watts and there's six of them. So what's that, 18 and 240? So 2040, just shy of 2,100 watts. So there we go, YouTube. Trying to get the second one on before it gets dark. Sun's going down, it's getting cold. <laughs> I'm trying like hell to get this thing lined up and bolted up, so I think this will be it for tonight. <laughs> Alrighty then. Day two. <laughs> Three panels are completely in, fourth panel. It's starting to go a little easier. So I'm starting to get a system down. <sighs> so the first problem is lining up the holes which are on the inside of the frame about eight inches in, well exactly eight inches in underneath a little lip, lining them up with this guy without pushing on it with the frame and getting it to unlock. So the problem is when you set the frame down, if you don't line the hole up exactly with this, you can see what it does, it just pushes it and then trying to get back under there and push this down and twist it to lock it into place is a bear. So what I'm doing is obviously measuring where the holes are. I'll flip the panel upside down on the other panel and line up the holes. It's still a hair off. But what I've figured out is that if I put some blocks in, the blocks hold it up enough that I can see right there I'm not quite lined up, so I can get my hand on the spring down below. So I don't push the spring, the spring collapses and the whole thing t flips over and I'm done. So that one's ready to go. And what I can do, let's see if she'll stay, is I can slowly pull out my little, let's use the GoPros in. <laughs> there, GoPro shim. So once I take the block out, I can actually line things up and then the frame drops around the uh, bolt. And the other bugger is obviously getting in under, under here and up in this rail up in here that you can't even see to get, let's see if I can show you, to get a washer and a nut around that bugger right there. <laughs> and right now I can just get my arm under it, but when it sets down all the way, my arm is literally like this and pinned, somehow get the nut and washer on and tighten it. <sighs> so like I said, I have a system. So I'll get these kind of lined up. I know this one's got it this way here. So now it's down and you can see that's as far as my arm will go and my hand has got to get right right there to get a nut and a washer. So I can lift up on the panel just a hair to give my, room, uh, my arm enough room to twist just a little bit. So now what I'll do is so that end unfortunately does not fit around it so what i have to do is get in with this 
until it's until it bites and then my buddy gave me let me use this cool little guy you can see I don't have to take the wrench off it it's a ratcheting uh, box wrench pretty stinking cool so my arm is just so what I'm doing is you can see that on that side and basically I'm pinched <laughs> to there but it's going without me having to pull the wrench off and oh my god is this a time saver and a forearm saver because my forearm I was having to twist my arm and try to get the other hand in to hold the wrench where it's supposed to be and it was just kicking my butt and now I can just keep that head in place and romp it down until it's tight right there so that's this little guy right here and all it is is that's on a spring to allow it to tighten <laughs> so yeah <laughs> the other thing I found out is the gap between the panels is kind of important because on the ends I can get my arm in from the end but when the panels are this close together I have to get my arm in like this and twist it to get it in so we're kind of figuring this out as we go so I pulled this one forward a little bit to give myself a little more room down at the end uh, one more on this and then two more panels oh my god I'm close <laughs> well 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 <laughs> Two kilowatts of solar mounted on the roof. Not wired yet, that's another whole project, uh, but they're mounted. And you can see they're pretty low to the roof. Uh, I think it's three, four inches. Let's see. Pull up the handy Leatherman. Three and a half, three and five eighths, something like that. So fairly low profile, eventually I have a, eventually, Eventually, I'll have a rail going down the side, coming across the front and going down the other side to protect the panels from branches and things. But for now, they're on. But yeah, that little ratcheting open end box wrench made all the difference in the world. The last four panels went down, or last three panels went down faster than I think the first one did. Um, between the blocks holding them up so I can line up the pins and the wrench, they went down smooth. So very happy. And it's a good thing because I'm going to have to take them off probably a month or so when I get this thing uh, sealed up. But at least I can get it all in, wired, and hopefully get the battery and everything kind of set and dialed in off of this. So there you go. 2,000 watts of solar, baby. Not producing yet, but it's on. <laughs>